Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hello and welcome to episode 76 of the Tourpreneur Podcast. I hope this episode finds you and your family and your loved ones in the best of health. Today I'm kicking off a new series called What I Learned This Week. And I was inspired to do this by a poll which we ran on our Facebook group for Tourpreneur listeners. And I asked what Tourpreneurs thought about the frequency of the online webinars that are out there. And I was really surprised by the results. 90% of tourpreneurs who responded to the poll answered that they felt the webinars were too frequent and they feel overwhelmed. Now, I understand that because we have to be selective. There was one day, I think it was Wednesday, I think there were four different webinars on that I wanted to get to. Of course, most of them are recorded, so you sign up and you can watch a recording later on. So it's well worth signing up. But then I'm like, well, where am I going to get the time to get through those four webinars from one day? That's without the others that come out on Thursday and Friday. And I discussed with Nicole Will of Asheville Wellness Tours how sometimes it's okay just to crash on the sofa uh, and just say, this week I'm not doing a webinar. This week I'm not listening to a podcast. This week I'm not reading blogs on, on my industry. I, I'm done. I need time out. That's perfectly fine. And also, there were some people who on the thread who said, well, hang on a minute. There's some really good people putting these webinars together. They're sharing a lot of great strategy and tips and tactics. What's the problem? And I think really the problem is fear of missing out. And I think Marika McEnroth Brewster said it very well when she said, I believe the anxiety may be rooted in the weighty feeling that we need to be doing so much now to prepare. Combine that with every marketing company, association, and even software putting out new webinars daily, and it is a lot to wade through. My personal takeaway is that it's okay not to partake in each and every single one. So that's that's really solid advice from America. And then Karina Vith, down in Hobart, Tasmania, said, each day I need to navigate my way through the fear of missing out feeling by being selective about which ones I listen to. So while at first I was feeling overwhelmed, I've overcome that by being intentional about what, who, when, and why I listen to. Making a daily choice about the way my time is spent has been a crucial part of this. Absolutely love that, Karina. And I've had to adopt that myself to look at where do I improve? Where do I need to improve? What do I need to learn? And also, you know what? I sit on these webinars and I make tons of notes Sometimes I don't even go back to the notes. I'm on to the next thing. And I know I talked about this with Nicole about reading a book and not acting on what I've learned, but jumping on to the next book. And I think many of us feel that way. Kevin O'Neill made a really good point where he said, I think it's a matter of burnout in general. Yes, there's actionable advice in the webinars, but for those who are insolvent, totally inoperable, out of cash and out of options, I imagine even thinking about your dashed dreams is painful. And then he also said that I don't know if every, I I was an operator first, an entrepreneur second. However, the level of what I enjoyed doing brought a new joy into my life. I don't know if every operator feels that way. I personally know multiple operators who despise the business end of their business and don't want to touch marketing with a 10-foot pole. They love being parasailers and flyboard instructors, tall ship sailors, wine enthusiasts, food and culture tour operators. And, and I get that as well, that this is the business end of what we're having to do. And also, there's no money coming in, so we're having to bring this all in-house. You know, I've got to now do all the SEO on my own. I've got to learn Facebook ads. I've got to, like, get a new booking platform provider. I've got to look at the back end, the bookkeeping. I need to learn QuickBooks, FreshBooks, whatever books, <laughs> right? So there's a lot of overwhelm. So interesting. And I don't think there's an answer to this other than I love Karina's advice about being selective. Ask yourself, right, where do I need to improve? And these are the webinars that are going to help me. Still sign up for the other ones because they'll all be relevant, but don't be overwhelmed by that is what I was going to say. Secondly, there's been a lot of talk about virtual tours. 
And I see many tour operators now rushing to build their own virtual tour or asking in our group, how do I go about building it? There's questions around, is anyone actually making money out of virtual tours? Uh, or is it a marketing strategy? So I have, a, I have a private view on it, right? So yesterday, I left Vermont and I traveled all the way to Pompeii in Italy, virtually. And I uh, signed up for the Tours from Home Pompeii, the city frozen in time, which is run by our friends at Walks, which you can find at takewalks.com, and they have a virtual tour on Pompeii. It was $10, and it was yesterday, uh, or Saturday noon, and I thought, okay, let, let's see what this is about. I love history, and at school, I learned Latin, and the textbooks that we learned, we followed a family who lived in Pompeii, so I've always wanted to go there, so here's, this is what I liked about it. I learned a lot. The technology was seamless, great photographs, great use of multimedia. I really felt like I had a good understanding of life in Pompeii. Uh, well put together. The tour guide, you know, and this is, we know this, right? The tour guide, Elaria, hope I'm saying that right, was so enthusiastic, so passionate, and so knowledgeable about Pompeii that I really felt like I was in good hands and I was with somebody who really wanted me to learn more about Pompeii. So that was great. However, the negatives for me, what's, what's the difference between the online tour and a travel documentary? So I don't know what the subscription is for Netflix right now, but that versus, I know Douglas Quimby's made this point, that versus 10 bucks for an online tour. And I will give um, Walks credit that they say, if you book an online tour, I'll receive a $25 gift voucher, which I can use to book any Walks tour in the future, valid for two years. So that's really cool, by the way. I didn't even know that when I booked it. I just thought, I love Pompeii, love history. And I I'm, I mean, I love the history of Pompeii, right? And I want to do the virtual tour. So I enjoyed it. Would I do another one? Well, I always want to help companies out. And actually, there were 32 people on it yesterday, which at 10 bucks a go, it's not bad going. So I'm hoping uh, Walks gave a good cut of that to their to Ilaria the tour guide, so she's making some money. Um, it's definitely good marketing for walks, but I don't know how much that will cost to set up and put together and to market that, right? So as a guy who loves tours, I'm not sure I would take another virtual tour. Yes, there was an interactive element. At the end, you could ask questions of Ilaria as you would on a normal tour. But for me, I didn't see huge difference really from there being a travel, you know, watching a travel documentary. Also, <laughs> the, the, it got a bit graphic in parts because part of the trail that you go on, that Ilaria takes you on, takes you into a brothel. And uh, I won't get graphic here, but let's just say, because not everybody who visited Pompeii back in the day spoke Latin, they had pictures on the walls of the menu, shall we say. And I was like, wow, I could just imagine sitting here with the family. Hey, watch this, you know, on Pompeii. And then suddenly seeing uh, or hearing about such things. I think maybe they need to put parental warning <laughs> on the tour, to be honest with you. Because I'm sure a few people might have had to rush for that pause button. Even though it was an interesting part of the town's history. For reasons I will not go into. But I, So that, that's my experience with the virtual tour. So what I would say to you out there, that if you're thinking of a virtual tour... Personally, I wouldn't recommend spending the money to build it unless you're a company like Walks or the tour guy that have that marketing muscle and know-how. For you to spend money on virtual tours right now, I don't think it's a good, smart use of your money. You may as well keep that in reserve for when we come out of this or use it to go on a Facebook ads course because Facebook ads is going to be so important to target local when we come out of this. And, and I say that with much affection and admiration for all our friends at Walks. I feel bad singling them out, but that's the one I went on. i tell you what I would be interested in, though, is more of the online experience. And I know Andy Lawrence was making this comment on an Arrival webinar this week about virtual tours. So I know um, there's a lot of cooking, uh, and I think Take Walks have cooking as well. I could see myself doing that. Uh, Airbnb experiences, I took a look at what they offered, and they offered a magic course. I've always wanted to do magic, but I'm rubbish, right? I mean, I can hardly tie my shoelaces up. So sleight of hand and all that, I'm probably going to struggle with. But hey, I would, I would pay for it because it's something a little different. So I really enjoyed the session with Christian Watts and Todd Kersey, which was part of Arrival Online. And they were talking about refreshing your, your tech, so basically looking at your booking platform provider. Because now we have time, right? I know for many of us, 
that's on our list of things to do, but it's way down the list of things we want to do. But if you're in a situation where you don't currently have a booking platform solution or you're not happy with what you've got or you just want to see what else is out there, now is the time to do that. But of course, there's 160 plus of these companies. And I enjoyed Christian and Todd's talk because they they were agnostic. They didn't say this company's better or that company's better. They talked through, and, and bear in mind, they're both, you know, tour printers. I mean, Christian had city sightseeing in San Francisco. Todd has been 20 plus years in the travel business. So these guys, they've, they've got the scars from being in business. They've been on the front lines and they talked through their mechanism, how they build a spreadsheet with criteria and how they look at all the different ones. But the two things that, that kind of made me think, first of all, Christian said, if you speak to a booking uh, a res tech company and there's something you ask for and they say they can do it, well, make sure you ask them to show you it in action. Because as we know, many salespeople, and I've worked in sales all my life, sometimes uh, economical with the truth, shall we say, and maybe that feature doesn't work or it doesn't work the way you need it to work. So make sure you ask them to show you it in action. Uh, and then secondly, you know, Christian was talking about the different payment models. And I've always been like, yeah, if that was me, I would get the pay the monthly fee. I'll take the hit myself. Maybe even add that 6% fee that the customer will pay on the, the percentage model. Add that to my own rates. But what Christian was saying, this really did give me pause for thought. He said, if you work with a company where they're making their revenue, so let's say booking company is making their revenue off the booking fees that they say they're adding 6% to your rate, are they more inclined? Are they more vested in sharing conversion data with you? Because if you don't make any sales, then they're not making any money. And it just got me thinking because I've always been like, no, I, I hate it when I, I, I booked a, um, a boat trip in Vermont not, not, not that long ago and there was a convenience fee and this fee and that fee. And I was like, oh, wow, it's just a boat on Lake Champlain. Why are there all these fees? So... I do understand the frustration with it. And I'm not necessarily endorsing the booking fee model. I'm just saying that this is the importance of webinars that Christian made me think about it in a different way. So I'm going to wrap up there because really I want to keep these to 10 minutes or less each week. And this is the first one, so I've gone on a bit. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll come join us on Monday School. So Monday School is a thread that I'll have every Monday on at the uh, Facebook group, which you can find at tourpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. And I'm asking all of our listeners and contributors to share one learning from the past week because that way we can all share some good knowledge amongst us all and maybe you'll see a tip or a tactic we might have missed this week and you're going to learn it from your fellow tourpreneur. So do come join us on the Facebook group for that. And I wish you all a healthy week. Hang in there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? These are rough times, but we will get through it. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.